right, it's Friday. My name's Al from Games Reup, and today we are looking at a. It is a Quake One total conversion. That's right. The game's called After the Fall, and well, basically, I contacted Pit Nailer. Pit Nailer is the indie developer behind actually porting this game, After the Fall, the Quake One total conversion, over to the Sega Dreamcast. Gave him a little tweet because obviously I've been following him from sort of the beginning of this this whole entire process. Oh my god. This is a damn impressive port. That's right, this port is coming to the Sega Dreamcast this year. I can't remember if we have an exact date. I'm going to say it's like summertime 2020, I think. Um, but anyway, I've basically got an internet exclusive here with three to four levels of After the Fall so far. We're going to take a look, as well as also some exclusive screenshots from a couple other levels that haven't even been talked about yet. Now, I've got no box art yet. Box art hasn't been released, Pip is going to be releasing these, those images himself, as well as some more exclusive images himself, so follow him on Twitter, that's Pip Naylor on Twitter. Obviously you'll see the uh, link down below on where to get hold of him. So no one else has this build currently, so uh, I'm excited for this because I know full damn well you guys love the same good Dreamcast, you guys love FPSs, you guys love Quake, you love all that sort of stuff, so let's take a fucking look. So here it is, this is After the Fall, the total Quake conversion for the Sega Dreamcast. That's right, Pip Nailer has put a damn lot of time into this, and this is the most recent build of the game. It's an exclusive. Let's take a look. Now let's start off by just looking at the sort of customization you've got here. In regards to your name, in regards to the colour of your shirt, the pants colour, and obviously the crosshair. Crosshair is the best sort of detail I personally like. Now what you will see here is the game actually has mouse and keyboard support, so that's great because let's face it, Quake was originally made for the keyboard and mouse. The game also boasts multiplayer, now I haven't actually seen multiplayer, does it work? I couldn't possibly say at this point, maybe eventually we will delve in and maybe it will be in the end version. Here we bring up controller cam, that's right. Now, this is a nice little layout, to be fair, in the point that the D-pad essentially is your focus and also your kind of HUD, or hub, I should say, there. The shoulder buttons are shooting and jumping. And also, now, the good thing is the analog stick actually is your aim. That's right, the analog stick is your aim. Unlike some conversions to the Sega Dreamcast of first-person shooters, this one has it. As you can see, this is essentially like the way Quake 1 would obviously start with your easy, your medium, your hard, and your nightmare skill, but there is a slight error in this version. Now, I did bring this up with Pip himself. I did say essentially, you choose nightmare, you can't choose anything else. The, the ramp does not rise for you to allow to go into the easy area. So what you basically do is you just press start and you do a new game. It's not exactly a hard thing to do, and it doesn't want to move too far from the original source material, which is understandable. Either way, let's crack on and let's play it in easy, because I'm shit at these games. Let's play some After the Fall. Loading screens, like I said, they're kind of to a minimum. There's not actually a whole lot of them. And, but, you know, that's quite shocking with a game that is essentially ported from a PC version onto the Sega Dreamcast. Like I said, this may look long, but compared to other disc-based games, this actually isn't bad. Now, as you'll probably see straight away, this this doesn't necessarily... It doesn't look like Quake, which, let's face it, is kind of the idea with a mod, right? The game is not gonna be Quake, but it runs on the Quake engine. That's right, this is exactly what this is. This is Quake 1, it's a total conversion, but it's a totally new game. Now, you will notice there, there was a mild stutter... Uh, when the you obviously picked up the shotgun, it kind of happens from time to time. All it is, it's a simple little bit of loading in the background. Doesn't freeze the game. You won't have any issues there. Now, when talking about the sound in this game, just listen to the bubbles. 
or drips, I should say. I think the sound design on this game is quite something. From the voices, from the actual enemies, through to gunfire, through to every sort of element, they've done, a, or I should say Pip has done a pretty damn stellar job of getting that sound ported over really, really well. There's no sort of degradation in quality. It sounds great. So as I said, the game plays like Quake, but isn't Quake, it's its own thing. But does it play similar in the sense of still key collecting and things like that? Yeah, it does. This game still is very much based on the whole grab a key card, it opens a door, more enemies, different things like that. But that's not a failure in the way this game was actually created. That's a good thing, and let's face it, I think people like the way that Quake and, you know, Doom played back in those days. That's why we're playing this type of FPS. It's a simple, it's a shoot 'em up with key cards. Are the levels set out very well? I'd say they are. Now, each, all of these different levels are kind of, they've got their own charm for each one so far. They all kind of have, have their own identity and their own different sort of dilemmas, switches, enemies. All, they are all slightly different or a slight variation on each one. The other thing is the actual level pacing. Now, you, like I said, with the mix of all the key cards and the different types of enemies and the different waves of enemies, it's paced out really well to the point where you're not getting bored, you're not having too much excitement, but it's all paced very, very well. Now, only sort of the issue I had here is I did not realise, but that sound was the sound of steps appearing on the ramp. I actually had to go to Pip because I obviously never played the original After the Fall 4 on the PC or the game on the PC, and I did not realise I actually had to climb up that ramp. Anyway, that's a secret if you couldn't see it because it is slightly dark in that area. Now, I played this this version of the game, this sort of three levels or four levels, I should say. I played or completed it within sort of 45 minutes to an hour. Now, the full game has the initial map and then the 13 maps. That's right, 13 maps that come with this port. So, let's face it, this is quite a good few hours of FPS fun. And let's face it, this is fucking fun. As I said, this is Quake, this is... You know, this is a quintessential FPS. Now, what I'm going to do in the top right-hand side of the screen now is I'm going to sort of be showing a few of the other images that kind of... They, they are exclusive to this channel right now. They've not been released to anyone. That's right, just showing the different level designs and a couple of the different enemies as well. Now, Pip's worked pretty damn hard on this project so far to the point where he's had to iron out a few bugs, a few different tweaks on this game to kind of make it more presentable and essentially a truly fixed version of After the Fall. Because it did have quite a few different bugs in the game on original release back in 1997. That's right, 23 years ago this game was released, and now it's coming to the Sega Dreamcast. So obviously Pip didn't really want to make any sort of level design changes. It was more kind of things like dialogue or sort of on-screen imagery or not not on-screen imagery but on-screen text to kind of simplify it and make it a little bit more uniform and kind of make it a way but it still looks good and kind of plays great without it kind of looking like a cheap mod because let's face it mods back in the day they were a bit cheap in the way they were built He's modernised it, he's made it look great and make it flow well, to the point it kind of plays a little bit like a Half-Life game. You'll notice the loading isn't a long time, and, you know, it plays fucking great. Now, like I said, the game's going to be coming out of June, so make sure you follow Pip Nailer on Twitter. And uh, that's right, as soon as the full version will be out, I'll be playing it, I'll be reviewing it again. And let's face it, this is going to be a fucking impressive game. I've been Al from Games Reup. Like and subscribe and let's try Nightmare, shall we?